Hello and welcome back to chapter 2. Today we're going to look at 2-3 which deals with product and quotient rules and then tomorrow we'll look at the higher order derivatives. So for today we're going to just look at the derivative of a function using what we call the product rule and the quotient rule and then the trig functions and higher order derivatives we will do uh, tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get started with the product rule. The product rule says that if you take the product of two differentiable functions, then their derivative is going to be the product of the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So the notation for this is right here. You have the first function f times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And we will do a couple examples with this. I'll probably have to answer a few questions in class, and that's okay. But I, in my mind, I will go first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So with example one, it says find the derivative of h of x, which is the product of 3x minus 2x squared, times the quantity of 5 plus 4x. So our notation for the derivative, or h prime of x, is going to be the first, or f of x, times the derivative of the second, which is g of x, plus the second, which is g of x, times the derivative of the first. Okay, and we're going to just call this right here function 1 and function 2, or 1 is going to be f, and 2 is going to be g, if you'd rather label it like that. So we're going to start out, and we'll say h prime of x is equal to the first, which is f. So I'm going to take my first function and just rewrite it as 3x minus 2x squared. Then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of 5 plus 4x is 4. Then we're going to add that to the second function, which is 5 plus 4x, times the derivative of the first function, so the derivative of 3x is 3, minus the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. And now all we have to do is simplify. So if I distribute my 4, we end up with 12x minus 8x squared, Plus, and now we have to FOIL the product of the other two binomials. So we end up with 15 minus 20x plus 12x minus 16x squared. So now we're going to combine like terms. I have negative 8 plus a negative 16 is going to give us a negative 24x squared. Then we have 12x minus 20x, which will give us a negative 8 plus 12. So this will give us plus 4x. And then we have just 15, so then we have plus 15. So the derivative of the product is a negative 24x squared plus 4x plus 15. Now for example 2, we have find the derivative of y equals 3x squared. You have to be kind of careful with these because some people forget that 3x squared and 2x are really products. So this right here is going to be our first function. This right here is going to be our second function. So y prime then is equal to the first, which is 3x squared, times the derivative of the second, which will give us cosine x. And then we're going to add that to the second function, which is sine x, times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of 3x squared is going to give us 6x. So now all we have to do is simplify, and we have 3x squared times the cosine of x plus 6x times the sine of x. And that's our derivative. And you could factor a 3x out if you would like. However, on the AP test, don't risk making that mistake unless you absolutely have to. 
And example three wants us to find the derivative of 2x times cosine x minus sine x. Now here, in the first part, we have a product. So we are going to have to apply the product rule. And then over here, we can just use our constant multiple rule. So to go and find y prime, we are first going to do the product rule on this piece first. So I have the first function and my second function. So if I take the first, which is 2x, and I multiply it by the derivative of the second, which is a negative sine x, then I'm going to add that to the second, which is cosine x, times the derivative of the first, which is 2. That is now taking care of the derivative of this piece. Now I need to continue my function, or my derivative, and I have to take the derivative of a negative 2 sine x, which is just going to be a negative 2 cosine x. So now I can go ahead and simplify all of this, and we have a negative 2 sine x, or 2x sine x, sorry, plus the cosine of or times 2, so I'm going to pull that 2 out up front, and I'm going to go minus 2 cosine of x. Well, positive 2 cosine and a negative 2 cosine, these are going to cancel. So this is going to leave us with just a negative 2x times the sine of x. The last thing we're going to look at today is called the quotient rule. Now the quotient rule is similar. Okay, We are typically going to be dealing with a, some type of a rational function. Okay, or We're going to have a a numerator and a denominator, and the quotient rule says that we're going to take the denominator and multiply it by the derivative of the top, then we're going to subtract the top by the derivative of the bottom, times the derivative of the bottom, and then we're going to divide that all by the denominator squared. So in my mind, I think bottom, which is this right here, times the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. And order does matter with subtraction, so you do have to know the correct order for this right here. So let's give it a shot with example 4, where we want to find the derivative of y given that we have 5x minus 2 divided by x squared minus, or x squared plus 1. So y prime is going to equal our bottom, which is x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the top, and the derivative of 5x minus 2 is just 5. Then we're going to subtract the top, which oops, we know is 5x minus 2, times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. And then we're going to divide that by x squared plus 1 squared, or the bottom squared. So now we're just going to simplify, and we're left with 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x squared plus 4x, all divided by the quantity of x squared plus 1 squared. And we can combine like terms. I'm going to pull out my x squared term up front. 5x squared minus 10x squared is a negative 5x squared. Then I have plus 4x and plus 5. And all of that's being divided by the quantity of x squared plus 1 divided by 2. So this would be my final answer. For example 5, we want to use the quotient rule. And we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph given by this right here, at the point negative 1, 1. So the first thing we have to do, when we know we're looking for the equation of a tangent line, we have to take the derivative. Well, to take a derivative of a complex fraction, we need to simplify that down. So if we get a common numerator, we're going to end up with f of x is equal to 3x minus 1 divided by x, and we're going to divide that by x plus 5, and dividing by x plus 5 is really the same thing as multiplying by 1 divided by x plus 5. So this is going to give us 3x minus 1 divided by 
the quantity of x squared plus 5x. So now when I take the derivative of that, I have a quotient. So I'm going to take the bottom, which is x squared plus 5x times the derivative of the top, which is just going to be 3. And I'm going to subtract the top, which is 3x minus 1, times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of the bottom is going to give me 2x plus 5, and I'm going to divide the whole thing by the quantity of x squared plus 5x all squared. So now I'm going to simplify, and this is going to give me 3x squared plus 15x minus, I have I'm going to put this in parentheses for now. 3x times 2x is 6x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus 5. Now this minus here I'm going to change to a plus and distribute that negative onto everything. And we're dividing the whole thing by the quantity of x squared plus 5x all squared. And this then will give us Let's see, I have 3x squared by itself. Oops, actually this 3x squared minus 6x squared is going to give us a negative 3x squared. So that takes care of this term and this term. Then I have a plus 15x minus 15x, which is going to cancel. And I still have that plus 2x. And then we have plus 5. And all of this is being divided by the quantity of x squared plus 5x squared. Now this is a general equation. I want to know what the slope of the tangent line is at the given point negative 1, 1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to evaluate f prime of x at negative 1. And I should replace that x with a negative 1 here. So this is going to give me a negative 3 times a negative 1 squared plus 2 times a negative 1 plus 5 and we're going to divide that by a negative 1 squared plus 5 times a negative 1 and we're going to square that whole answer and this is going to give us 0. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative for example 6 of part a now the thing with part A, sometimes you don't have to do a quotient function or quotient use a quotient rule if you're given a quotient. Sometimes we can actually simplify things out. Like part A, I could really rewrite this as 1 6 times x squared plus 3x. So when I go to take the derivative, or y prime, I have 1 6 times 2x plus 3, and I just distribute the 6, so then I end up with 2 6 is 1 third x plus 1 half, and it saves me a little bit of work. In part b, I can simplify this fraction, and I can factor out the negative, I can factor out the 3 7 and then divide everything by x inside, so I would have 3 minus 2x. And so now when I go to take y prime, I have that negative 3 7 out up front, but I'm only taking the derivative of now a negative 2x, which is going to give me just a negative 2. So this here then gives me 6 7 And last but not least, for this problem here, I would rewrite this as 9 fifths times x to the negative second and we can then go ahead and just do a straight um, derivative so if I bring this down up front I now have a negative 2 times 9 fifths times x to the negative third and I can rewrite this as a negative 18 fifths um, and that x then is going to go into the denominator and this would be your final derivative. So we should probably put y prime is equal to that. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow.